Bless your neighbor, tell your neighbor how happy you are to see him in the house of God, and you may be seated to your brothers and sisters. We have the service of Holy Communion, that's the God's commandment. Today let me speak about the topic but every month we, do, we define a topic to speak about during the whole month as we did it before the, the name of the topic of this month is Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of Holy Spirit this topic is pretty essential and important all the times it's, uh, it sounds very often because Holy Spirit is uh, the third trinity of God. Third trinity, which is close to us. We can inherit the kingdom of God without Holy Spirit. Some people can argue about how can you believe that God has three personalities but that's the truth the trinity of god our god is one god but at the same time we know that there are three personalities father son and holy spirit so let me tell you this personality we are going to meditate about holy spirit it took part very closely in christ's sufferings when christ was shedding his blood on the cross it's written that by holy spirit he brought himself as a sacrifice to god and it's also written as apostle peter said by holy spirit the sufferings of christ was known beforehand that christ should have suffered it was prophesied in the old testament and holy spirit took closely part well holy spirit took part in god's creation when the holy when the holy spirit of god was hovering across the earth when there was neither earth nor sun and holy spirit was hovering the whole earth so holy spirit is directly the author and creator of the whole universe praise be to the lord i believe that a person cannot be saved without holy spirit so the foundation of my story is the gospel of john 14 26 and another verse is from the letter of first peter one two so john but the advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. How God, call, how Jesus calls Holy Spirit, He is a comforter, He is an advocate, the one who is always close, the one who is always near. In Greek language it means an advocate, the images that scripture so sh shows us about holy spirit is water is fire is oil anointing and there's another scripture first peter 1 2 who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctifying work of the spirit to be obedient to jesus and sprinkled with his blood grace and peace be yours in abundance sanctifying work of the spirit there's one great truth that we are saved and justified by the blood of jesus christ and this is the truth that can be said as a fun foundation that the building is built so peter is talking to us about sanctifying purifying it's an everyday practical thing to be sanctified by the spirit so i would say that this truth is the roof of our building justifying of jesus by his blood is the foundation and sanctifying is a roof 
one cannot exist without the other. It's codependent. We can't just be justifying without being sanctified in everyday life. So it's important to understand. Sanctifying is what God prepared for us, and that's what we have to abide every time during the all of our lives to sanctify. And this is the work of the Spirit. That's why Apostle Peter is underlined here with the importance that sanctifying by the Spirit. And he starts his letter with important issues. We Christians have to sanctify by Spirit. Holy Spirit has a great role, great part. Holy Spirit can teach us in the truth. He's our teacher. He's our comforter in our uh, sorrows. That's His direct work in our lives. He keeps us safe. He's our advocate and intercessor. So, as Apostle Paul says, that we are baptized by Spirit. That's the proof that our citizenship is in heaven and He will pick us up when He comes back. And we can see other meanings about Holy Spirit. So, let me say one more, one more time. It's important for us to have close relationships with the Holy Spirit. If I don't have it, I'm depriving myself with great blessings. What I really need comes through fellowship with the Spirit. So, Advocate, Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will set in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything they have said to you. The disciples was at the edge of changes. Jesus was supposed to suffer and leave. And he said, I will send you another comforter. It will be better for you. So Jesus Christ on earth finished his mission on earth, but he said, it's not over yet. Holy Spirit will come in my name. He will continue and teach and guide you in all truth. So this comforter, the disciples hasn't tested yet. It was supposed to come. It was good for them to have Jesus nearby. They saw Jesus, how great he was, merciful, miraculous things. But the Lord says that I am to leave you, but there will come another comforter. I'm, I'm, not, I don't sh I'm not sure that disciples would measure all the blessings that uh, would expect them. In the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came, up, came over the disciples, we read great changes in every realm of their lives. Great changes came and took place because of the Holy Spirit. Even the shadow of Peter would heal sick. And we saw the gifts of Holy Spirit worked in the churches, beautifying, building up the church. Another moment, in the beginning of 20th century, remember the Azusa Street uh, witness, and the Holy Spirit came with power in Azusa Street. During the next two years, 52 countries were sent with missionaries. A great number of people came to Jesus. And we saw great acts of Holy Spirit through this great revival. Great number of, of people joined church and it all happened because of Holy Spirit and His work. Just remember when it, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, 3,000 people got saved uh, by Peter's speech. It is the work of Holy Spirit. So he performs that in the church, and that's a great promise. So he said, it better for you if I leave you, but I'll send you another comforter. Everyone in this earth, on this earth needs comfort. Going through difficulties, obstacles, in an early age, in, in well-advanced years, 
we all need someone to support us and comfort us. But let me tell you, if we remind about Job, who's, when he was suffering, his friends were close by, but he said, you are pitiful um, group. He used to have great richness, he had friends, gold, but he lost everything, health, children, everything. Only God can comfort us during those obstacles. That's why um, only Holy Spirit can comfort us. Only Him could be trusted. There is such a comfort that can be done and received only by Spirit. Not a man can comfort us, only Him, Holy Spirit. And, you know, it can come in an unexpected way, not as we wait upon, because God works differently from our imagination. Remember what God says about Holy Spirit. He would come into the world and He will convict. He will convict the world of sin, righteous and judge. That's the role of Holy Spirit in everyone's lives. A young man who goes to church, but he is depressed in such a great oppression, and his parents doesn't realize what, what, what's going on with him. So this is just as parents, all parents worry about their children, and the parents would diff offer different solutions to his child. Would you like to have this or that? But they don't really understand what's going on in a child's soul. But, you know, in a child's soul, in a teenage soul, there could be a fight against sin, against lust. And he can be convicted by Holy Spirit, conviction of sin he knows only, and God. We can understand, we can have compassionate to children, but during, in a oppression hour, only Holy Spirit can convict and tell us. And as soon as we are convicted, you know, like Job says, I have a lot more, David says, I have a lot more sins rather than hair on my head. Even when he would wake up in the morning, he was full of sin. He was convicted in a deep way. But what comes after the conviction? The repentance. After the repentance, there comes comfort. So, after the conviction, there comes comfort. After the conviction, conviction there comes Repentance, after the repentance, there comes comfort. Only Holy Spirit can give us assurance. When you come to heaven, no matter what happens to you, that's the will of God. That's the will of God. That's the guidance of Holy Spirit and mercy. And then your eyes are open. That's the comfort that can be given only Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is our teacher. No one can teach us, only Him. There are different theologians that's great and important. We, we're happy about the theologians. But we know that the important um, teaching and revelation that can a man receive is through the Holy Spirit. Those truths that are the truth that is hidden in scripture and it's hard for us to understand it's the work of Holy Spirit that can open it's not enough to listen to the sermons to listen to great teachers it's not actually enough just to read the books it's important to have fellowship with spirit to have teaching from him even comfort comes through the teaching I remember when I was young in my Christianity, when I got saved and I 
came out to Jesus. It was winter time, I remember. And I thought, oh, I got sin in my mind. I had a bad thought in my mind. And then I was in depression for six months. I was worried in a deep way. I thought I had such a great sin. I will not be forgiven. Until one sister took a notice of me and she asked what was going on in my heart. So I opened up my heart to her and she prayed for me and she gave me a short teaching. It was the work of Holy Spirit right then. And that burden just gone. And I felt easiness and lightness that I am forgiven. I needed teaching and a realization of the truth that the Holy Spirit treats me positively. He loves me. Only God knows our hearts. Only God knows our thoughts. Who but God knows what we are fighting against. Even if we are ready to share our hearts with people, people would not understand us well enough. What are we fighting against or with? If you are fighting against certain diagnosis, and the doctor will take great decision it's not really up to doctors to see about your health in spite of modern technologies and diagnostics it's still up to God Holy Spirit knows all the obstacles in your life He knows what you need to do he knows all your obstacles in your life. He knows what is a great comfort for you. It's important to have fellowship with God, to have His comfort, so that Holy Spirit would be the one who teaches us in all kinds of truth. So, and moreover, He's not just teaching us with Bible verses. He reveals us the way the path we are going through. Comfort is, it means that the one who holds you by your hand. He's not just, you're not just mm, walk along the road looking at the map, but you have that guiding line who's taking you by your arms. He's guiding you, he's teaching you. He's warning you about a certain danger, about holes and pits about any kinds of danger he warns you in every moment of your life and you can hear clearly his voice even in the midnight he can wake you up and put a certain burden in your life to pray for a certain person and then you pray and you know you will know this situation is going to be solved and then you see the hand of God so Holy Spirit's advocate is your intercessor. Apostle Paul says he's interceding. It's so valuable when Holy Spirit is your intercessor. When people intercede for us, we can have any doubts about our questions. But when the Holy Spirit Himself is our intercessor and our prayer is ascending to the throne of God, right there, up there, and just because of the work of Holy Spirit, our prayers are heard like a perfume aroma and our prayers will be accepted and answered. When your prayer comes from your pure heart, so let me continue about sanctifying, sanctification. So picture the image of Holy Spirit could be compared with an oil. Oil had certain ingredients, certain um, anointing oil. When there was a certain anointing for ministry, People used to be anointed with certain ingredients. 
Our ministry without Holy Spirit would not be perfect before God. God takes our ministry, our life, with the work of Holy Spirit. We can't please God. We don't have anything inborn issues, good issues, good things. We can't please God anyway. Apostle Paul in Corinthians said only he gave us the capacity. 2 Corinthians 3, 6. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. It comes through the sanctifying of Spirit. Holy Spirit can change us from the inside out. He can change our nature. The Bible speaks about promise, about heart. It's, it's perfected by Holy Spirit. I'll take a stone heart, broken and hardened heart, and give you a new heart to know me. So he can make us competent through the sanctifying of Spirit. The Lord commands Moses, written in Exodus chapter 30, verse 23, take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid mirror, half of such fragrant cinnamon, 200 shekels shikos of cassia and olive oil. Ahin, make this into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. <clears throat> it will be the sacred anointing oil. Then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the covenant law, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, and the basin with its stand. You shall concentrate them so they will be most holy, and whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons and concentrate them so that may serve me as priests. Since they are anointed with oil, they became pure. Even Aaron's and his sons, people knew, but they turned into those priests after being anointed with that oil. So God gives us certain species, certain details. Mira, Liquid mirror uh, speaks about certain kind of oil that God gives everything with abundance. God in, gives us in full measure. We don't even imagine. Holy Spirit has an abundance for us. Whatever we need, actually, whatever it's important for us, there's everything absolutely in God. Today we can feel drawbacks, not because God doesn't give us, just because we maybe don't have enough faith and prayer, and we don't have fellowship as we should to actually, as we should have done it. Maybe for years we are depressed, not just because God and His will for you is to be in depression for years. But no, maybe it's just because you don't know and you just spend your power and efforts for fight with for fighting with against depression. It's difficult for you to take part in other people's needs and it's hard for you to see other people's needs because you are concentrated on your own disease, sickness and hardships and difficulties. 
But God actually hasn't given you that burden. God has enough of everything so that you would not walk in depression. He has enough revelations if you need. He has got enough comfort if you need. There is enough healing for you. There is enough of everything that you need. Probably just you have to know Him more and He will reward you. So, myrrh is what God gives you with abundance. He doesn't take away your depression, but He just delivers you from their depression. And you walk with easiness. So, it's a process of sanctifying to set you free from burdens, set you free from, from thoughts, set you free from your negative emotions. That's the part of sanctification of Holy Spirit. God gives about uh, direction about cinnamon. Well, cinnamon has certain smell. Well, but actually our life should produce a certain aroma. If we have the Holy Spirit, we will produce that great aroma, great fragrance. How do you think it is obvious? A man will always rejoice. He's always happy. He's always positive. At any obstacles, there is abundance of energy. It's fine to fellowship with that man. He doesn't say have any bad jokes about you. He speaks about good things. He speaks about encouraging things. He supports you and encourages you. That's a process of sanctification one more time. God desires you and me to have that aroma. Wherever we are, let us, if we are sanctified by Spirit, we will influence that atmosphere we are abiding in. Our aroma will be spread, not only with the preaching of the Gospel, but in our, it's in our character, it's in our attitude to people, it's in our attitude, it's in our kindness, it's in our positive attitude to people. Then the major part that was important to make certain ingredients of oil. Fragrant calamus. It produces certain aroma. When we squeeze the calamus, it produces beautiful aroma. A person's life of Christians happens under pressure. It's not just outside factors. It's not just offense and arguing against Christianity, but it's an inside pressure. But you don't produce, accuse or complaint, but you don't produce questions and doubts to God, but you produce Aroma. That's the process of sanctification and the work of Holy Spirit. People are different being under pressure. Some start complaining for, with parents, uh, complaining about obstacles, accusing others. But when Holy Spirit is in your life, you are in the process of sanctification. Being under pressure, it is written, when you are under pressure in a sorrow, be more perseverant. When people see your perseverance, when people see you going through hardships in your life, they know about it. When you reveal perseverance and humbleness before God, it is can be it can be compared with fragrancy. Where do you get the energy from? That's the process of all sanctification of spirit. He gives you grace to go through these hardships. That's why you don't complain, but you go through a hub obstacles with dignity. So that's an aroma when you are under pressure. 
The next ingredient is 500 shekels of cassia. Cassia. When we are under the work of Holy Spirit, we would always see such a process when something will be missing, something bad will be missing from our life. Maybe you don't know about these issues, but Holy Spirit will show you what you have get to get rid of. Maybe it was a sin, it was our hobby, things that wouldn't bring you closer to Jesus, but it's okay for the society, for the world, it's pretty reasonable. Receptive, but there are things God looks at different. Maybe they are certain serials that you spend time with, hours watching them, maybe books, that you, novels that you spend time and there aren't any great revelations in them. But always when the Holy Spirit works in us, He will remind you about wasting your time. When Spirit is in your life, you can experience that lightness. He speaks you gently. You don't need that. You need to leave it. So when you leave it, others may not understand that. They wouldn't even notice. But your life will be different because things will start changing. And you are in that process of sanctification. So, that Cassia could be taken when you have to miss something. And finally, there comes an olive, olive oil. Oh, there's no need to for me to speak about the importance of olive oil. There's everything in olive oil. People can laugh a little bit about how do you feel yourself? By Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit is healthy food that supplies me with everything I need. That's the great nutrition. God gives me power when I am weird. God Raise me up when I fall down and stumble. God leads me through hardships you have never imagined. But He's leading me through. And He strengthens my faith. He makes my feet as deers. And He raised me up to the heights. Psalm 90. I believe it's written by Holy Spirit for us. The one who lives under the heights of God. All the blessings would come upon his life. He might go through the valley of sorrow. He might go through diseases, but he is not afraid of errors or other sickness because he is with Holy Spirit and he fits with the Word of God. He is protected in all spheres. He had a spiritual sword and a shield of faith. His chest is protected with the shield of righteousness. His feet are covered with the feet of, with the shoes of preachers. It's just, in, it was short words. That's the picture how we go through sanctification with Holy Spirit. God sanctifies us to what we have to be ready for. My outside man is getting older every day by day, but my inner man is being renewed daily by Holy Spirit who is inside of us. We are His temple. Paul, Paul's Paul. In Corinthians, don't you know that your temples are this? Your, your bodies are the temples of Holy Spirit. If our body is temple of Holy Spirit, then our souls is that sanctuary. We didn't have spirit when we were in sin. 
Now we are reborn from spirit. And we became alive through spirit. And our mindset is different. If our soul was accompanied by mm, our soul was accompanied by lust and mm, body, we didn't even learn how to sin. But today, when our spirit is renewed, then spirit influence our soul and influence our body. Sometimes when we are in disobedience and when we are instructed by our flesh, as soon as we committed sin, we are convicted and we come again to the altar and we bring the sin to God and we repent and call the Holy Spirit convicts us of that. It's really dangerous when a man does wrong and he's not um, and he doesn't repent. But when Holy Spirit repents you of certain issues, it's a great sign. It's important for us to have all the time. Amen. Well, we can say a lot about Holy Spirit, but let me add some moments when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus you should be born again but Nicodemus was a teacher in Israel it was a respected man due to his position he was supposed to know it but he was far from it how come he said how is it possible to reborn again how can he come into the mother's womb what a strange notice how is it possible Christ says no of course I'm not talking about physical rebirth if you are not reborn from spirit and water cannot come into the kingdom of God whoever is not born from the spirit and water cannot be reborn Nicodemus understood he was standing before God when the Lord speaks about something important do not overvalue your intellectual capacities many people can argue about doctrine of Holy Spirit some things that Holy Spirit is like experience and they argue about that and there are many confessions who doesn't really treat Holy Spirit as a third personality some things that Holy and the speak the signs of speaking tongues was given only by that times when people came up together for Jerusalem from different corners of the land but no the one in Corinthians it is written the one who speaks to God in unknown language he speaks secretly to Holy Spirit he doesn't know what he is praying about what he is praying for but it's the Holy Spirit who interests us with the tongues no argue we don't have such a tradition to argue but we are sure of what we confess so we confess what the scripture tells us about Holy Spirit and the doctrine about mm, baptism of Holy Spirit the foundation for us is Holy Spirit and is scripture so if Apostle Paul speaks about the importance to speak tongues they utter mysteries by spirit for anyone who speaks tongues does not speak to people but to God let's speak more tongues let's overflow with spirit more and this blessing is given to you 
Why don't you use it in a more often way? Why don't you spend time speaking tongues? Why don't you edify yourself with speaking tongues? The one who speaks tongues will either edify yourself, your inner man is growing. You may not see yourself, but if it's from God, it's important. It's important. I believe when we pray tongues, when we are filled with spirit, we edify ourselves. Our inside man is growing, is opening its heart, his or her heart for Jesus. Receive by faith and become obvious in real life. So just be fulfilled with spirit, pray tongues. Then, if we go on in this dialogue, we see that Jesus is opening, is revealing more truth. Holy Spirit is could be similar with wind. You don't know where it comes from, where it goes to, but it's free and independent. It's sovereign. Holy Spirit is powerful, omnipotent, omnipower. If kings would have such power to control, they would never be able to hold the wind. They would never be able to catch wind, to put wind in a basket. No. Holy Spirit is sovereign of what he performs. Our role, our job is to be obedient under, to be obedient to that power. It's like sailors, they would raise up there. When there is no wind, the sailors would never raise up the sails when there's no motion. But as soon as the matter of the ship sees winds, he gives a command to raise up all kinds of sails, to adjust to the wind, to be dependent on the wind, to move on, to sail on. So our life is totally dependent on Holy Spirit. Help us, God, to see how dependent we are. If Christians would have such a fullness of revelation, how dependent we are on the work of Holy Spirit, we would be so happy and blessed. Just understand that simple truth of how important you are, of how dependent you are from Him, on Him. Your life would be changed totally. You wouldn't spend so much power in nothing. When a person is led by Holy Spirit, when a person feels that soft wind, when you are in such a great garden with in surrounding of beautiful flowers, they would produce aroma, and the wind from time to time would bring you that beautiful aroma. And even though the flies and bugs don't afraid of that soft wind. So Holy Spirit mm, beautifies our life. It makes our life meaningful. Like a full river that you're moving on in. And you're happy about the Holy Spirit. Nothing can make you happy um, but the presence of Spirit. Nothing can subs subs substitute but uh, with Jesus. Nothing. Only joy that truly joy that comes from spirit can give you but not money nor anything remember great prophet who was moved by that elijah it was elijah god moved greatly through his life answered with fire ascended fire on the altar Remember that experience of Elijah. 
But Elijah being mm, persecuted by Jezebel, Jezebel, when he was hiding under a bush and God sent an angel a couple of times, but then he said, get up and you've got to have a long road. Second, third Kings chapter two, two, th 13. God started speaking to him. Wasn't it enough for God to say, Elijah, God had to brought him to a certain place. At first, he showed him great hurricane, great wind. And God says, no, I'm not there. Not in an earthquake. Then came another powerful, destructive nature disasters. Elijah was standing and looking at all things, but God says, I'm not there. But then there was a wind, soft wind. Elijah showed his face. The presence of God felt his place, that place. Elijah wasn't able to see at God, and he was there. And in the soft wind, it was the, it is the tongue of Holy Spirit. That's the language of Spirit. There is such a moment when he convicts. When he is like a destructive wind, he crushes everything, all kinds of sinful things. Look at John Bunyan. He was a criminal in prison. He, he came up to God and he said, it was like a crushing power. He hit me with his great cross. And he, God entered my life so powerfully, but then there came so, a soft wind. So God's desire for us to reveal himself in a soft wind is a great restorer. I think you looked a lot of times in your life about the wind in, in autumn and fall times, in fall season when the wind can blow leaves from trees. If God worked in my life and I was full of ambitions and pride, then my trees would be broken down. But God doesn't work that way. He doesn't kill, He restores. And if we look at the fall season, when you are bare leaves, you're not energetic enough. So Holy Spirit would move away all kind of frightening things, whatever, things you don't need. He's shaking you off from all kinds of worldly things people boast with in this world. You don't need it. And you are far from all kinds of worldly things. They are not your values. Because the work of Spirit was so great in your life, was so in time, that during those years you got what you had to do. And God knows when to teach you in all kind, with all kinds of truth and bring the important things in your life you need. May God help us, dear friends, to meditate about Holy Spirit. So I'm closing my sermon. We're going to pray now. Holy Spirit took part in Christ's sufferings. So let's have a look at the Lord Jesus Christ as the one who is the source of our life. It's written, He brought Himself with Holy, by Holy Spirit to God as a sacrifice. It's hard for me to say what kind of the work or kind of work that Holy Spirit was there when he was in agony in, in that garden fighting against whole kinds of power of hell. I think Holy Spirit was close on him all the time.
The great desire of God is to save people. That's the great goal for God, to save a person's life, a soul. There's a story in the book of Kings talking to David, speaking about his son, Jonathan. He encouraged the king to meditate about the work of God. He sa she said, will be like water poured out into the soil that wouldn't be able to be gathered anymore. But God meditates what God thinks about uh, so that rejected ones wouldn't be rejected. And it's true. We are as water poured out into the soil that wouldn't be collected anymore. Our life is so shortened. It's so short. God doesn't desire sin sinful people to die. We can't even imagine what a great work God performs in a person's life to bring them to Christ so that a person would be born again from an early age he is leading no matter what kind of family we were born in whether we were brought up by Christ or prison or parents Holy Spirit presents in a family in, in, in this life yes I was brought to church from an early age now I was on that bench, shaking my feet, not, didn't understand what was going on. But I understand it was God's purpose, God's will for me to be born in that family, to walk to that church. And God was leading me through my life. Maybe I didn't have any other way just to come to God. So at the age of 16, in summertime, in June, when Pastor asked who wants to follow Christ, I lifted, I, li I raised my hand and I made a sinner's prayer. I was water baptized later on. And sometimes people might think, why I came to God in such a late age? Some testimonies sounded. My grandpa was an Orthodox. She was praying for me. Maybe her prayer. It was a sign for you that the Holy Spirit thought about you. Yes, you got saved in your fixed 50s, 60s, and you sinned enough that you think that God wouldn't forgive you. But God had thought about you when your granny was praying for you. And it doesn't matter you what kind of path you had gone through, but it's important the result. The end is important. The final ending is important. Doesn't matter what how sinful you were, what kind of demons you fought against. Maybe you spent years in prison. It doesn't matter. But if Holy Spirit touches you, Nothing is important. Your past is not important. You know why? Because you are a child of God and you are saved. There's no difference between you and me in this side of the Lord. No difference between Christians from generations to generations being, by being blessed and you who came up to God in your well-advanced years. Holy Spirit loves you as much as He loves other people. He sanctifies you and gives you new life. His power is unmeasurable. He's so great in His actions.